Welcome Naresha Technologies, this is Mahesh. I am preparing a video series on Flutter. So, Flutter is a cross-platform technology. I mean, we can write the code only once you can write the code. That code you can deploy on Android platform as well as iOS, okay. So, I prepared a video, uh, we discussed what is Flutter, then after that we discussed how to develop a first Hello World application with Flutter and we discussed what is stateless widget and what is stateful widget we discussed in the previous videos. So, in this video, uh, you will develop a simple application with Flutter. What is the application requirement is? You will create an application, you will create. You will ask the user to enter some text in the text box. A create a text box, you will create. You will ask the user to enter some text in the text box, like enter some text. You will ask the user to enter some text in the text box. Next, after that, we will create a button, we will create. We will create a button, we will create call. Get text is a text will display on top of the button. I will display a text called get text is a text. So, when your user clicks a get text button, we will create one more label we will create here, one more label we will create. When our user clicks a get text button, I want to get the text from this text box and I want to, I want to update the value I want to update. To this label I want to update the value I want to update. A simple, uh, a simple example just for, 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 for to understand how to configure the click event for a button and how to get the data from text boxes and how to set the uh, data to this label we will understand in this example, okay. This is what application requirement when user clicks a get text button, get the data from this text box, update the value to this label, we will update the value, we will update, okay, this is a requirement. Is. So, let us see how to do it in Flutter, okay. Let us start Android Studio, in Android Studio choose an option called start a new Flutter project. I already explained in the previous videos how to add the Flutter plugin. Once if you add the Flutter plugin to your Android Studio, you will get this option, you will get start a new and new Flutter project. So, choose this start a new Flutter project, choose Flutter application, next specify what is the application name. Uh, I am giving an application name called the Flutter UI app is application name I specified. Flutter UI underscore app is application name I specified, next and click on finish. So, if you need any, the node support if you need, I mean what are the example you are developing, if you need this notes, the program if you if you need, okay, just go through this URL called jst.github.com, go through this URL jst.github.com, if you go through the URL, if you go through it, you can see the notes, you can see with the name with the name call, the fourth application is a name, you can see a name called fourth application, In that fourth application you can see the notes you can see, the example whatever you are developing, for this example you can see a notes you can see, In, go through this URL you can get the notes you can get for this example, okay. So, let us see here, so by default we got ready madely we got some template we got by default. So, what we will do is nothing but and we will get a dot file we will get, where you, where you can see a dot file is nothing but under the project there is a folder called lib is a folder, under this lib folder you can find this main dot dot is a dot file, okay. So, you know that we are using a programming language called dot is a programming language we are using, okay. So, open this dot main dot dot file, okay. So, what we will do is nothing but uh, we got some a default code we got, what we will do is nothing but we will remove this code, we will remove, I am selecting the complete code, we will remove the code we removed. Okay, by default we got some template, right? So, we selected the entire code we selected, I removed the code I removed. Now, first what we will do is nothing but first we have to import the material dot dot package you have to import, the first statement you have to import the material dot dot. So, you can write the import statement you can write import material dot dot. So, imported this material dot dot package we import, imported the first statement. Next. The next statement is nothing but, you know that execution of this dot program is going to begin with so the main method, we had to create a main function, we had to create void main. So, in this main function, we are going to call a method called run app is a method we are going to call, this run app method is will expect the widget object, it will expect as an input parameter. So, we had to create a widget we had to create, so let us understand whether we had to create a stateless widget or stateful widget. 
So stateless means nothing but static, only for displaying the text you can use a stateless widget. But here when user clicks a button we want to update the text we want to update. We want to get the text and we want to update the text we want to update. So here we had to create a stateful, uh, stateful widget we had to create. Stateful widget means nothing but we had to create two classes we had to create. One is which is a child of stateful widget class and one more class we had to create which is a child of state class. Okay. So let us see here, here we had to create what? A stateful widget we had to create because we want to update the text on the screen. Just for displaying the text, there is no any user interactions, go for stateless. But if you want to update the text, if you want to take user interactions, then create what? A stateful widget. Okay. So here I am creating a class I am creating, I am creating a class I am creating called my widget, which is a child of extents, the stateful widget create a class which is a child of stateful widget. Why it is showing the error is nothing but it is an abstract class. Stateful widget is an abstract class, contains an abstract method called build is on method. So let us provide the implementation for that abstract method. Put the cursor, you can see an error mark you can see once if you put the cursor. Click on this error mark and provide the implementation, create one missing override method. Let us provide the implementation for that method. So create state is a method in return type of this create state method is what? State is a return type of this method. So what you have to do is nothing but just now I told you in case of stateful widget two classes we have to create. One is a child of stateful widget, one more thing you have to create a child of state class. I am creating one more class I am creating called class my state which is a child of extends the state class. So it is showing the error because it is also an abstract class, contains an abstract method. Let us provide the implementation for that abstract method. There is an abstract method called build is abstract method. Return type of this build method is nothing but it is expecting the widget object it is expecting as a return type. Build is a method name, return type of this build method is what? Widget is a return type of the build method, right? Now here in the create state method. The create state method is returning, I mean the expecting the return type as state object it is expecting as a return type. So we created our own state class we created called my state. So here what we had to do is in create state method we had to return, we had to return my state object we had to return. The create state method we had to return what? The my state object we had to return, okay, and so it is semicolon. Right? Now we created a stateful widget we created. Now we will see what is the code we had to write here inside this build method. Return type is expecting the widget object is expecting. Now here what we had to do, okay, we created our own stateful widget we created. Now the run app method is expecting the widget object. Now we had to specify, which object we had to specify here? My widget and ends with semicolon. So first execution will begins with the main method. From the main method we are calling the run app method we are calling. So we, we specified the object of my widget, my widget is a child of stateful widget, right? The stateful widget class contains one abstract method called create state method is expecting the state object as a return type. So we created our own state class we created called my state. The state class is also an abstract class which contains an abstract method called build is abstract method is expecting the return type as a widget. So now what we had to do is nothing but we had to return a default widget. By default, uh, if we create a project, the material package will be imported by default. So what we are doing is nothing but we are returning the material app we are returning here. We are returning the default widget called what? Material app. So we are returning what? The material app we are returning. On this material app, the home screen, the material app you will get, uh, as of now you will get an empty screen we will get, right? Uh, on the home screen, what you what we require is nothing but we want to create an application with the toolbar support. Now he'll, here you will get a toolbar support. We require the toolbar support is required, or we call as a app bar. We call, and this is nothing but is called as a body. We call the screen is called as what body we call, and in the bottom of the screen, uh, I want to place a floating action button. I want to place in the bottom of the screen. So to get this toolbar as well as the floating action button as well as body support, uh, we are using a template we are using called scaffold is a template we are using. That scaffold contains the toolbar, the body as well as the floating action button. So on the home screen, on the home screen, uh, I'm creating the object I'm creating for the scaffold object I'm creating on the home screen, the scaffold. 
right? The scaffold co scaffold contains what? The app bar is one thing. One more thing is what? Body, and one more child element is what? Floating action button. The scaffold contains the three element: app bar, body, and floating action button. So the app bar. I mean, what is the background color, what is the title you want to display, those properties will specify in the app bar. So create the object for the app bar class, create the object for the app bar class. This app bar contains few attributes like you can specify the title, what is the title you want to display on the app bar. Uh, you can create the object, you can create for text class object you can create. You can specify what is the text you want to display, I am displaying a text call. UI example is a text I'm displaying. I'm displaying a text called what? UI example is a text I'm. Next, you can specify uh, the text size and all these properties. If you want to specify, uh, there will be a property called text style. Style you can specify the object of text style object you can create, and you can specify uh, where you want to align. What is the text style and all you can specify. So create the object for the text style class, create the object for the text style class. So you can specify uh, the font weight whether you want to get in the bold or italic, I'm specifying the font weight dot bold I specified, the font weight dot bold I specified. Okay. If you want you can, you can change the color code you can change, but by default you are going to get the white color color code you will get by default. If you want to display this text exactly in the middle of the screen, uh, you can specify text align, you can call text align dot center, you can call exactly in the middle of the screen, we are displaying this title called UI example. And if you want, you can configure in the text style itself, if you want, you can specify uh, the font size, you can specify like, uh, but make sure you have to specify the float value, you have to specify, specify 30 is a value I specify 30.0. If you give only 30, you will get an exception you will get because it is expecting the float type of value it is expecting. That is why I specified 30.0 I specified. Fine, we are done with the, we are done with what? The app bar we are done. If you need, you can create the floating action button, otherwise you do not require to provide the implementation for the floating action button. As of now in our example, uh, we do not require that floating action button. If you want, you can create, uh, what we will do is nothing but, we will place an exit button, we will place. When user click that exit button, we'll close the application. We'll close. Okay. So in the floating action button. Let's see what is a what you had to write under the body. We'll complete the floating action button <coughs> logic. And then we'll see what is the logic you had to write under the body. I'm creating the object. I'm creating for the floating action button. Uh, we'll specify some background color code. Also, we'll specify for the app bar. For app bar, we specify title in a same way. Uh, I will specify some background color also, I will specify for the app bar. So you can write colors dot, I specified purple or purple accent, you can specify some color codes you can specify. I choose a color code called purple is a color code I selected here, colors dot purple. So now in the floating action button, what you want to uh, perform when the floating action button is clicked, you can write that logic you can write here. So simply you can write here itself, simply you can write opening and closing of the bracket and now what you want to perform when the floating action button is pressed, you can create as a separate function you can create like in the previous example, uh, we create a function we created called update count and we are calling the function we are calling, that is one approach or otherwise directly you can specify the opening and closing bracket you can specify here itself and what you want to perform when the floating action button is clicked, write that logic here. So simply I am calling system dot exit of 0 I am calling, okay. So we will see what is the, because we are unable to find that system dot exit of 0 to close that one. So we will see uh, how to close the application, as of now we created a click event we configured for the floating action button, we will see what is the solution, uh, how to close the application, but because we are unable to find that system dot exit of 0. So what is the icon you want to display for floating action button, you can specify, the icon you can specify like by using a property called icon, child, new, icon, you can create the object for the icon class, you can specify icons <coughs> dot, you can see some icons you can see here, uh, we will take an icon called exit is icon we will take, 
check is there any method called exit app yes there is an icon is there for exit the app exit to app is icon we specified this is the icon you are going to get okay if you want you can specify some background color for the floating action button you can specify some background color like colors dot I specified the same purple color color code I specified as a background for this okay we are done with the app bar we are done and we are done with the floating action button let us see what is the code you had to write uh, how to close this one now in the body whenever the floating action button is pressed it is going to call this particular function will be called you can say it is anonymous function this function will be called whenever you click the floating action button now on the body we want to we want to present the screen data we want to present on the screen we want to place on text box we want to place on button and below that one label we want to create total we want to create three components we want to create total on the screen so first what we will do is I am creating under the body I am creating new center first whatever we are placing we want to display exactly in the middle of the screen and under the center I am creating one child I am creating that is I am creating the object I am creating for the form I am creating the object I am creating I am creating the object I am creating for what form because we want to place three components we want to place one text box one button and one label so that is why I created the object for the form I created so first you had to create inside the form the child element how many columns you are having you are having only one column or two columns you had to specify that columns you had to specify here so how many columns we are having here we do not have multiple columns we are having only one single column we are having so let us create the object for the column class object we will create because we do not have multiple columns we are having only one single column we are having okay inside a single column inside a single column uh, we want to place multiple child elements we want to place like one text box and button label you want to place multiple child elements so you can see a child element under the column called children under the column you can see a child element called what children this children is expecting what type of uh, it is expecting the array of widget see here this column is, ex is having a child element called children is expecting the widget of what array widget of array so all these three things you can consider as a widget button the text box label you can consider as a widgets widgets we call technically so you can create that widgets we can create inside this array widget array you can create the three elements you can create okay let us see here first I want to get some because directly if you write the code uh, it is going to be very close to the screen beginning I want to get some space I want to get first so you can write first one child element under the widget first create one create the object for the padding class create the object for the padding first so padding uh, we had to call edge insects edge insects dot all means nothing but in all the sides you will get the padding but only in the margin I mean top only we want to get some space you want to get in the top you can specify edge in, insects dot only you can specify where you want to apply that padding you want to apply you can specify top only in the top I want to apply I specified 10.0 I specified like this or 15 I specified so you are going to get some space you are going to get from the screen beginning okay so next after giving some space I mean under the widgets this is also called as one widget we call even the padding also you can consider as one widget this is one child element we added next after that you can create one more child element you can create called new create the object for the text to form field is an object is there what is the use of this text to form field is nothing but we want to take input from the user enter text we want to take input from the user we want to take so to take create the text box to create this text box we are creating an object for text to form field is object we are creating creating the object for text to form field so under this text to form field we can specify now we are going to create empty text box we specified text to form field we specified so you are going to get empty text box you will get inside the text box you want to display this hint message you want to display called enter text enter text is a message you want to display inside the text box for that what we have to do is nothing but you can specify like decoration there is a child attribute called decoration you can specify the object of new 
you can specify the object of new uh, input decoration is on class is there, there is a class called input decoration is on class is there, inside that input decoration class we can configure the hint text you can configure, new input decoration here you can specify what is the hint text, what is the hint text you want to display you can specify, create the object for the text class, or directly you can specify hint text, what is the text you want to display is nothing but we want to display a text called what? enter text. Now, inside the text form field, I mean in this text box, in this text box we are displaying a message we are displaying called enter text is a message we are displaying. So, inside the text form field, we, we configure the hint text called enter text is a hint text we configure. And one important thing we had to configure here, later to get the data from this text box, to get the data from this particular text box or form field, text form field we had to configure an attribute call, controller is an attribute is there. Later to get the data from this text box, we had to specify controller, it is expecting the object of what? Text editing controller object it is expecting here. So, globally what I am doing is nothing but inside the, inside the build method or outside the build method, you can create the object you can create for the text editing controller object you can create create the object for what? Text editing controller is equals to new, I am creating the object I am creating for text editing controller. So, why you require the text editing controller is nothing but further if you want to get the data from that particular text box, we require the object for this text editing controller. This, this text editing controller object we had to link with this text form field. So, here you can specify one more attribute for this one that is controller and you can specify the ID of the text editing controller. What is the ID we specify, what is the reference we specified for the text editing controller? TE1. So, you have to specify the reference of text editing controller reference, you have to specify. So, later if you want to get the text from this text box, we are going to use this control, we are going to use TE1, okay. And if you want, you can specify uh, the few more properties like, you know, for example, if it is a number type of data, we have to take only number from the user. Right, let us say for example, mobile number, we have to take only phone number, we should not accept the characters. Like that kind of restrictions if you want to apply, you can specify the keyboard type is an attribute is there, by using this keyboard type attribute, you can specify whether the keypad you want to open with the numbers or only characters you can specify by using the keyboard type. So, let us see here, you can specify keyboard type, you can specify uh, text input type is on class is there, by using the text input type you can specify, text input type you can specify whether you want to accept only text or date and time you want to accept or email address, or what kind of data you want to accept you can specify here or only number type of data you want to accept or phone number you want to accept you can specify, you want to accept only text type of data you want to accept, so you can specify text. So, keyboard type is specified, the text we specified, okay. So, we are done with the first thing we are done. We are done with the first thing, we create text box we created, inside the text box we are showing the hint message we are showing. Then we want to place one button we want to place called get text is a button we want to place. So, you can specify, you want to place a button called get text. This is one component, one child component it is. We are placing all these things we are placing under the widget array. First we created padding we created first, one child, one child widget, one more thing we created what? New text form field is one more widget we created. Then after that I want to get some space I want to get, because if we do not give a space, uh, the components will be close to each other. So, we we'll get some overlapping issues we will get. To, to, to overcome that overlapping issues, I am giving some padding I am giving here between one component and another component. So, again the padding of 15 dp, uh, 15 pixels is a padding I specified. Next after that we want to place on button we want to place. So, you can create an object for raised button, new raised button. What you want to perform when this button is pressed, you can write the logic you can write here. So, simply you can use this opening and closing bracket. So, whenever the button is pressed, the get text button is pressed it is going to call this particular anonymous function will be called. And you can specify what is the, what is the text you want to display on the button, you can specify here, there will be an attribute called child, you can specify uh, the new 
text, what is the text you want to display, you can configure here. I want to display a text called what? Get text is a text I want to display. If you want a few properties, you can specify like text color, background color for this button and all you can specify. Like here you can specify the same attributes you can copy from here. The style, okay. Create the object for the text style class. And you can specify what is a font weight. I specified font weight dot bold, okay. And you can specify what is a font size. I am specifying 30.0 is a font size I specified, okay. And by default, you are going to get uh, check is any property call color. You can specify color dot. colors dot. I specified the white color is a white color is a color code I configured for a text. And for this button, if you want, you can specify a background color background color code you can specify for this. So rising button on pressed, I can specify what is the color code. You can write colors dot purple is a color code I specified. In the button color code, you will get purple on the text. We are displaying the text we are displaying with the white color on the button. So, we get a button we created, whenever you press the button, we are calling this anonymous function we are calling. What you want to perform when the button is pressed, you can write the code, you can write here. So, what you want to perform is nothing but, uh, we will take one label, we will take one more label here. I am taking a variable called string, msg is a variable I taken. Initially, this msg is nothing but some empty string we will specify initially. I taken a, a variable I taken called msg is a variable I taken, string variable. Initially, we are making it as a empty we are specifying. Now, whenever user press the button, whenever user press the get text button, what we will do is nothing but we will write msg is equals to, msg is equals to t1 dot text, we will call. I mean, whatever user is entered in the text box, that value we are getting and we are storing the value into msg variable we stored the value we stored. Understand what you are doing? Whenever user click the button, get text button, we are getting the data from the text box. That value we are storing, we are storing into msg variable we stored the value we stored. Then after that we had to call a method called set state method we had to call. It is like a, a, a refresh functionality. Just to refresh the screen we had to call the set state function we had to call. So, after getting the data and stored the variable in the msc variable, we are calling set state. So, it is going to reload, the UI will be reload, okay. So, we are done with these two things we are done. We are done with the text box and we are done with the get text button. And next, we had to create this label we had to create next, okay. Let us see here. Next child element we had to add after this and give some space because otherwise we will get some overlapping issues we will get. I am giving some padding, I am giving a padding called 15 pixel is a padding I specified, we will get some space. Then after that, we had to create one more child element, we had to create new text. What is the text you want to display, you can specify. Inside the dollar, you can specify msc. Whatever the value is there in the msc variable, that value I want to print. Initially, we will get just a straight line we will get. Later, whatever the data user is entered, that data we stored into msc variable. And few other properties you can configure like text size, like these kind of properties. Uh, what we will do is nothing but we will we'll copy from here. We already configured the text style so many places. Okay, I specified a text style, bold, 30 is a font size is specified. If you want, you can specify the color code and all you can specify for this. Otherwise, default, the black color, color code you will get for the text. Okay. If you want, you can specify the color, like by using the attribute called color, you can specify colors dot purple is a color code I specified. Okay. So, we are done with the application. Whenever you press the get text button, we stored the value into msg first, that msg variable value we are updating to the text view component we are updating. Let us run the application and see the output. Uh, first, we will we'll run the iOS simulator. First, I am opening in the iOS simulator, I am opening first. Next, after that, you can open the Android emulator, you can open. 
you can open both you can open android emulator as well as simulator first both will be open first our application will not be deployed just our emulator and simulator will be open first once the ios emulator and simulator is opened you can run the application you can run it will take some time to open this emulator and simulator once it is opened you can run the application you can run on these platforms okay it will take some time we'll wait now the both uh, emulator as well as simulator both are opened as well as ready both now we can test the application in both these two platforms i'll test so first i'm testing the app in the simulator iphone simulator so i selected the iphone simulator i selected and click on this run button once if you select the run button the app will be deployed on the simulator first we'll take some time to deploy and once it is working fine in the ios simulator we can test the same app in the emulator also we can test android emulator so app is installed in the ios simulator app is installed in what ios simulator we install the app we install you can type some text you can type you can enter some text you can enter in the text box and once if you press the get text button once if you press whatever the data we entered in the text box that particular data we are updating to the label we are updating right whatever the data we given in the text box whenever you click the get text button we got the data from the text box we got the data so app is working in the simulator ios simulator we tested now we'll test the same application we'll test in the android emulator we'll test the same application okay so choose the android emulator choose the emulator we already tested in the simulator it's working fine now i selected emulator i selected here let's run the application now the same application will be deployed in the android emulator also same application will be deployed okay so app is deployed on the android emulator app is deployed you can write some message like for example so enter some text in the text box we entered and whenever you click the get text button so whatever the text we entered in the text box we got the text we are updating to that one or we are updating to the label we are updating so only one pending thing is remaining that is uh, whenever you press the exit button we want to close the application we want to close so whenever you press a floating action button we take an exit icon also we taken here whenever user press a floating action button uh, it's going to call the floating action button on pressed will be call if you see in the floating action button it's going to call this on pressed will be called in the floating action button and this on pressed if you want to close the application if you want to close you can call uh, in case of android we are having system dot uh, exit of zero you can specify or uh, just if you want to close the activity you can call the finish method you can call so here just if you want to close the application simply you can specify uh, exit of zero you can specify you don't require to call the system dot exit of zero simply you can specify exit of zero you can specify if you call the exit of zero if you call it's going to close the application will be close if you want to close the application if you want to close simply call a method call what exit of zero we had to call so even the system dot exit of exit of zero as well as finish is also not working to close the application. we'll see in the next video how to close the application so as of now we place the exit button we placed only one thing is remaining what is that one whenever we press the exit button we had to close the application we had to close we'll see that one in the next video but you understand right what you understand in this example is nothing but so how to create a button how to configure a click event and how to get the data from the text box and how to update the text to the label you understand in this example okay let's try to work on up to this in the next class uh, we'll see a simple login page we'll design and we'll see how to write the data into shared preferences and how to read the data from the shared preferences you'll understand in the next class next video okay thank you mm -hmm.